Thanks for joining us. I'm Nancy Furness, and this is We've Got Issues. We've Got Issues is a nonpartisan, citizens-based forum where we look at topics of interest to the Tri-Cities. And we would like to thank Tri-Cities Community Television for making these interviews possible. I'd also like to acknowledge that our interviews are taking place on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of Coquitlam First Nations. And we thank the Coquitlam people who continue to live on these lands and to protect the lands and the waters and all that lies above and below. This afternoon, we're joined by Cindy Karkner, and she's running for Port Coquitlam City Council. So thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, Cindy. It's great to meet you. Yeah, it's great to meet you, and I'm happy to be here. Um, I was wondering if you could start us off by just telling us a little bit about yourself, your background, and maybe a little bit about how you've been engaged in the community. Sure. My background. Well, I am an interior designer is my occupation. I could use you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, creative, that's, that's me. I worked in residential and I've worked with builders and developers creating projects, uh, single home, family homes. I did, I've been doing this for 15, 20 years now. Yeah. I've lived in Port Coquitlam for 30 years. Uh, my husband and I, we've raised three daughters in Port Coquitlam. We've used all their amenities and services. And uh, this is actually something I've been thinking about for a long time. So having three daughters mm -hmm. that were born and raised in Port mm -hmm. Coquitlam? Uh, yes. Well, uh, yeah, the second one was like two okay. when we moved so, here. And then, yeah. So. so you've basically gone through the whole right from uh, preschool, mm -hmm. maybe some daycare, yep. right up through all the yep. community programs, yep. sports. Schools, um, everything. Yep. Everything. Yep. So when you are running for Port Coquitlam City Council, um, is that the perspective that you will be bringing, or is there another perspective that you'll be bringing to the table? I think a little bit of both. I mean, I certainly have the history, and, and uh, Port Coquitlam's been great to our family, and it's been a really wonderful city to, to raise a family in. But I think as, I, as I, I get older and I get more experienced, you're able to think about a lot of other things. And so, mm -hmm. so that's kind of brought me to here that's brought me to a point where I want to be specific. I, I kind of like a seat at the table. I want to re represent the people in Port Coquitlam. I want to hear their wants, their needs, their what's important to them, and I want to be their advocate. I want to be their voice. And okay, so um, I don't know if you've maybe kind of partially answered what I'm, th my next, next question, question is, why are you running? For, for those reasons, okay. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, I've always kind of listened, and, and I've, I've listened to council meetings. I, I follow the Tri-City News. I, I um, like all the, the issues that come up. And then it's just been something that's kind of been in the back of my mind. Mm -hmm. That's I, I've thought, you know what? I could do that, and I, I could do a good job. I like people. I like listening to people. I, I like to, um, I think I have a, a, a calm spirit, and I, I'm a good decision maker, and I'm creative. All good things to bring to the table, yeah. right? So it sounds like you like to connect with people. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what you've done so far in sort of along the campaign trail to connect with people? Um, what have you done to prepare so far for the election? Okay, so I decided to jump in about a year ago. Wow, even you though I was early. even though I was, you know, it was in my thought process before that. Right. But I thought, okay, I'm go I'm going to kind of commit and start really preparing myself. Right. So I've always been involved in the community, so that hasn't changed. Uh, you know, I've been involved with the people. Uh, I, I like uh, my neighbors, mm -hmm. um, volunteering with churches and schools and packs and sport, sporting sports, things like that. So that's something I've, I've drawn from right. and uh, learned from. Well, it sounds good. It sounds like there's lots of diversity for mm -hmm. your experience and mm -hmm. things that you're, you're um, coming to mm -hmm. council with. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me, you've been talking to people in the community. Mm -hmm. What are you hearing? What are the, some of their issues, their concerns? What do people care about? Well, I actually have been out walking and talking to people a lot. And something that makes me extremely happy is how much they love where they live. Mm -hmm. And when people say, 
they've actually said to me, you know, sometimes we think about moving or what should we do? And then they look around and they go, no, we really love Procoquitlam. We love everything that it has to offer. We like where it's situated. Um, right. And then, then we start talking about, so if you could change some things in Port Coquitlam, what would you change? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes it's a little sleepy and there's not enough to do on a weekend or on a Saturday morning or on a Sunday or when my family comes to town, what right. can we do to stay local and, and hang out? And that's something that I'm interested in. Okay, you've yeah. used a term that I don't know if this plays into what you've just been talking about, um, creative agenda. So I'm just going to kind of semi-quote you here. You say, um, you believe that you can provide a creative agenda that focuses on investing in community through new opportunities and partnerships. Um, what is a creative agenda? Like, what would be on that agenda? What would be on that agenda? Well, Port Coquitlam, surprisingly, is like there's, there's a lot of different ethnic groups in Port Coquitlam. Oh, okay. Like 30% of the people in Port Coquitlam identify as a, a different ethnic. And um, I don't think we see enough of it. Mm -hmm. So I think that we can ask those people, bring those people into our community and maybe create events that would kind of highlight that, that would bring all the community together. What kind of events would you like to well, see? Yeah. Can you give, you're creative, like, um, sh tell me some kinds of things that you would like to see uh, as far as cultural and Well, events, events that I visited in other communities are um, like food festival events, right? You go in yeah. and you have all these different food festivals, Food, you know, food trucks, food vendors, restaurants, or whatever. But they highlight different cultures, and right. I think people love that. People love to eat. They love to socialize. They love to, you know, get come join, together. join, yeah. come together. And I think that that's something that does bring people together. So, you know, like we we have some good parks. We have some good venues that we could possibly host mm -hmm. something like that. Um, I know we have Sizde Badar, which is an mm -hmm. Iranian mm -hmm. um, festival of spring. Mm -hmm. We have the um, the Polish in event. The... Um, but as you're saying, there's so much more that we could maybe, and those are both very successful they events. They are. Right? So why don't we have more of them and maybe bring more of that at one big event, right? Ah. Right, that's what I'm, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah. to have like a culture yeah. days yeah. kind of yeah. looking at a variety of different. Yeah. Um, yeah. So. I guess that brings me to another little bit yeah. different of a question in that you were talking about having some spaces in the community that are really good to hold events mm -hmm. and, um, you know, welcoming park spaces mm -hmm. and things like that. So we have quite a bit of infrastructure. Mm -hmm. um, how are we supporting our local artists? Like, we have the infrastructure in place, but can we do more, do you think, as city councillor, to support the arts community? We can use their art as we start creating mm -hmm. more beautiful places to, to be, to walk, to, to sit, to think. Um, I think some of that is starting, like the downtown core is starting to change. There's been already some really great improvements and I think that it is a very unique downtown core. Mm -hmm. It's got some character, it's got some um, lots of history to it and it does still has a little ways to go but I think that when you when you plan something you have to plan it as a whole and maybe right. it all doesn't happen at once but there, there will be there will be times and places where you can you know put art and put work and right. you know talk to, to local artists on on their vision because it's one thing to be a, a city planner it's another thing to be an artist right and so artists right. bring something really unique to the table and they they make the, the community their own so would you like to see more public art yeah. throughout our city yeah um, and using local artists local artists of course yeah. yeah yeah I think we do have a very vibrant arts yeah. community yeah. so um, definitely an opportunity there yeah. with the redevelopment. There's been a lot of redevelopment yeah. downtown. Yeah. Um, one thing you, and not just you, but other people mm -hmm. uh, talk about the small town charm yeah. of yeah. Port Coquitlam. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Small, tar small town charm. So let's not take Port Coquitlam and make it something that we don't recognize anymore. Okay. Let's keep it. Let's keep the, the that feel, right? So we've got kind of everything we want in Port Coquitlam, but it yeah. kind of smells like, it feels like a, a, a smaller, 
a smaller community. And, our, and our, I think our downtown core can reflect that, you know. Okay. Let's bring in some places like unique shops where people can kind of browse and, and walk around and, mm. and visit. Let's, let's bring in a little, some more restaurants, cafes, Things Do like you that. think um, another thing is walkability? If yeah. you're talking about mm -hmm. the kind of mm -hmm. what I think your vision is, is you know having people come down and and spend time mm -hmm. in the downtown core. Shaughnessy Street is a very busy, busy street, yeah. main street. How can we grapple with that? With traffic and transportation, is there some way that that can play into your vision? Well. That kind of brings you into transportation, right? Transportation mm -hmm. in, in, in Port Coquitlam. It, it is a busy city and there are con congested areas, but I think that we have to look at ways, because we can't change what's already there, right. to, to brighten them, brighten areas, maybe upgrade sidewalks that need upgrading, right. um, pedestrian crosswalks, you know, all that kind of stuff. Even like, there's lots of walkways and parks and benches. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to, you have to think outside the lines a little bit, and I think that that can be created. So somehow, like, I think we're not going to see Shaughnessy Street disappear. No, no, <laughs> there's no, 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 no alternative no, there. No, but to find ways to work with what we've what we got have. Mm -hmm. to make it more, um, I don't know, welcoming and, and easier to walk around. And um, you, I think, had talked a little bit in your platform about walkways and bike bikeways yep. yep. and bikeways where would you like to see those like what is your vision with respect to that well i actually like to go bike riding and and there are, we we have the poco trail which is wonderful but sometimes you want to go into downtown or mm -hmm. you you know so i think that shaughnessy street from the mary hill bypass all the way down into downtown need, okay. needs to be very well so there's something we could do there yeah, to make yeah. it more accessible and yeah, there needs to be there needs to be well marked safe bike lanes mm -hmm. and actually probably better sidewalks from one point to the next point okay and i just staying with the sort of the small town mm -hmm. feel and, and trying to make it more uh, a more welcoming space we've recently seen a lot of trees come down in mm. the downtown core and people have been increasingly speaking up and being vocal about that um, do you have any thoughts on that well I noticed the trees come down and um, I actually asked the question and they the, the city have had has brought in uh, specialists and looked at the trees and the mm -hmm. trees had kind of gotten to their to their life capacity so at a point, the trees become then a hazard. Okay. Like they can become not safe. And in windstorms and bad weather, they can, they can actually fall and break and, okay. hurt, and hurt people and destroy things. So I don't think it's so much as they would just want to come in and take away all the trees. I mm -hmm. think it's you, you look at the lifespan of a tree and right. then you do replanting. You, so, you, you, you build up areas again with, right. with, with beautiful greenery, with with a native plants. I, I, I like native plants to a region. I think that's... Okay. You, you know. So is that what the city, that's the information that they gave you, the trees were past their lifespan, yep. needed to come down, yep. um, but it wasn't to do with the design of the open plazas or anything Well, they like looked that? at that. They looked at that first, okay. like the trees are there. So what are you gonna do with the trees? Are we gonna mm -hmm. leave the trees and work around that or, or the, did the trees have to come down? And the, and, and the, the advice that they, that this is what I was told, I'm not okay. on city council, so I don't know, that the trees had reached their life expectancy and, okay. and they were becoming, right. you know, they could become a danger. Okay. And you were saying you would like to see native yeah. species planted yeah. in there. Um, so what, can you tell me more about that? I'm, I'm a I love trees. Oh, do you? And so I'm just yeah. interested well, if you have thoughts on well, I what do, it should look like. Uh, and I don't know a, a lot about this, but I've just kind of started uh, reading a little bit and learning a little bit about, um, you know, building passive homes, building greener homes, mm -hmm. and, and then you build these homes or these places, and then you have to landscape around them. Right. Well, I think that the landscaping should be t what we have here. Let's use the native okay. plants. Let's use the plants that work the best in our city and climate so you know digging up plants and planting things that just and throwing them out and right. putting new plants in that i don't i don't really like that i okay. think we should just have plants that kind of just love to be here and grow 
Now you've gotten into a little bit of a different area. You're mm -hmm. talking about plants, um, growing native plants because they grow best here, here. right? Yeah. And you don't have to necessarily put a lot of inputs and things into them. So, um, and because they hopefully should thrive here, we should end up with some big trees at some point. Mm -hmm. um, and that brings us a little bit to climate change. Mm. So we're dealing with mm -hmm. issues right now where we're seeing the effects of climate change and having, like, do you think that there's a place for big trees and, and native trees in our cities because of climate change? Well, I'm not an env environmentalist, but I do know that climate change is here. It's mm -hmm. real, right? We've got lots of drought. We've got heat lots domes, of heat atmospheric domes. Rivers. We've got, yeah. we've got more it's hard to believe we have more rain than we already have in Vancouver and in, in the greater Vancouver. No, who would have thought? <laughs> right? But we do. So again, that has to be looked at. Like, mm -hmm. you know, how is that, you know, yeah. trees are important. I mean, Vancouver or British Columbia, the West Coast, we are known for our greenery. Mm -hmm. We are known for the lush and the green and the, and the, the wet. And so, so, but we also have to have trees that now right. are going to survive. Right. This intense heat and drought. So I, I'd leave that to the specialists to figure mm -hmm. out and maybe some of our native plants. Maybe looking at maybe looking at different a little ones, bit different, different ones. Yeah. But yeah. but I think that that should be in yeah. part of the design, should be in part of, in, in part of the planning. And with your creative mind, mm -hmm. like who knows where you could go with that, right? Mm -hmm. Some creative plantings. Um, you've talked a little bit about the need to have eco-friendly buildings and um, protecting waterways and, mm -hmm. and our parks and things mm -hmm. like that, environmentally sensitive areas. Mm -hmm. Do you, can you give a, some examples of what you'd like to see happening, which maybe isn't happening now, some well, changes that you'd like to see? You know that I think Port Coquitlam has a really good environmental plan in place. Okay. And I just think that we have to stick to that and then get advice and continually get advice from the people that know best in that. Like I, I've read all their, you know, their platform on that and, and I agree with it and I think that it's it's really, really good. I think we're on the right track. I think we are on the right track, right? We have water all around us. And we have to keep that clean. We mm -hmm. have fish in our rivers. We've got to keep that safe for them, mm -hmm. you know? Um, we, we have a really good, you know, going further on that, we have like our recycling and our garbage right. wastes. We, I think we've led, our, our little town has led other cities to look at us and say, hey, you know, what are they doing for their recycling? What are they doing right. for their bins? And so um, we have to continually learn and right. improve on that. And I think Port Coquitlam does a really great job. I, I follow them online and uh, stuff comes up like, oh, where to get rid of certain things. Mm -hmm. I think that we just have to be continually on that. And, and you know, I think, I, like myself personally, I thought I knew what to recycle and whatnot, mm -hmm. Me too. but it's not that easy, right? There's so to have that information yeah. accessible to people. You're saying you can go online and find that. I, I can, yeah. That's really important yeah. to have it easily accessible. Yeah. So, and then once I find something out, I want to pass that on. And, mm -hmm. and as you said, like I was, I thought I was just doing all these great things in recycling, and then I, when I read the fine print and I actually read, I realized, oh, I got to make some changes. Yeah, I can't put those plastic gar um, grocery bags no, in recycling, right? right? So, <laughs> and then so then let's stop using them, and and um, even green bin, right? We got to mm -hmm. use, yeah. we can't use the plastic that what we think is, you know, we can't use that. So I think that's important, and I think I think that everybody has a responsibility there. Every citizen right. has a responsibility there for, right. for, for now, for our children, for our children's children. I think um, we just have to continue to learn. And I think for a, a couple of reasons, we also have bears in yeah, our communities, well, right? And yeah. being responsible with our garbage. And uh -huh. that's another place where the city has, I, I think has done a lot of work trying to reach out to people to ensure that we keep our bears safe because we don't we're sharing be, the community, right? Yeah, and we don't yeah. want to be having to get rid of our bears because we're, we're not responsible. Absolutely. Right. Um, can you tell me a little bit more? I just want to talk a little bit more about diversity and inclusion mm, because yeah. it seems to be an area where, um, I don't know if I want to say you would focus on, but that you have put quite a bit of thought into. So including our um, 
people in the community that maybe have different ethnic backgrounds mm -hmm. and come and they we know they bring different food, different culture, mm -hmm. different skills, and that we're only stronger for Here we are. embracing yeah. diversity. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about reconciliation mm -hmm. because that's another um, part of the community that do you think we're doing enough for meaningful reconciliation? I think we're we're trying really hard and I and I think that you know as far as I can see and hear and uh, what the kids are learning in schools, mm -hmm. um, time put aside to honor that, I yeah. think we are. And um, that's something we have to, again, continue to have conversations right. and ask the questions. You know, we can't assume. Right, so, of course. So, so we have to, we say, are, are we doing enough? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Is there something that you think the city the, like as a councillor, is there something that you would take to the city, um, some actions that you would like to see happen at the municipal level? Well, and I, and I don't know what's exactly happening at the, the municipal level, but I, I think that when you have these ethnic minority groups, you mm -hmm. have to invite them into the conversations. Okay. So and are they being invited into the conversations, right? Yeah. And then are, are we learning from that? And are we taking the advice that they give us and, and yeah. You know, we want them to, we, you know, we want. But you're being inclusive and yeah. opening the doors and, yeah. yeah. Anybody that is feeling left out should have a voice. And why are you feeling left out from our community? Like, what are we not doing in the community? Right? Right. And do you feel that there are people whose voices aren't being heard? Or? I, I'm sure there are. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you have any thoughts who they might be or how the city or you as a counselor would be able to reach out and engage those people? I know you're not expected yeah, to have no, all no. the answers, well, okay, but I'm just so curious. I, I did a little bit of just, a, it was not a big thing, but during mm -hmm. during COVID, uh, when we were all shut down, I, I was able to deliver food baskets to um, refugee families that ah. had moved into our community, a little bit of Tri-Cities community, but mainly Port Coquitlam community. Right. And I wasn't able to get go into their homes. We had to put stuff outside and stand right. back and all that kind of stuff. But, and, and some of the, the language barriers were there, but I was able to make a, a connection with a couple of families and, and that I was, I still am friends with now. Oh. And I've watched them immerse themselves in our city yeah. and get their children into schools, help them make connections with people that could help them mm -hmm. and, and watch them thrive a little bit. And they're, and they're, they're working really hard and, and they're very happy. And so when I started doing that, it touched me. I, yeah, I, it, it touched me, right? I can see. And, yes. and uh, I feel like there's work to be done. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think to have that first point of contact mm -hmm. is so important because coming, it can be very isolated or isolating if you're new to a community and maybe English isn't your first no. language and you're not sure where to go to get the resources to have something like that mm -hmm. is incredibly important and it does change lives. Yeah. So do you think that as a, a counselor, would you like to see more of that, the city reaching out or maybe as, taking some actions to um, I don't know what to somehow bring those families together or to connect with them. Well, yes, and sometimes people I find want to help, mm -hmm. but they don't okay. know how to help. Exactly. Right. Yes. So maybe as a city councilor, I could find the hows and then connect the two. Ah. Right. Okay. And put them together. Right. So when I reached out to some of my community and said, "Hey, I need some help here because I've I've noticed there's a need. Mm -hmm. People were more than happy to contribute and to help and to re and, and to jump in. Right. They just didn't know how. Uh, and here you are. Right. So yes, I I, I can see those dots starting to connect yeah. there. Um, I have one question, and I don't expect you mm -hmm. to have <laughs> the, the answer. full answer on this one, but in municipalities including Port Coquitlam we see about uh, we see about three-quarters of the people not even coming out to vote mm -hmm. people are really really disengaged mm -hmm. um, municipal level politics as we know mm -hmm. that this is a level that's really important mm -hmm. to our day-to-day -day lives how do we get people to vote and what are you doing to reach out to get those non-voters um, excited about the election? Well, it's, I've been doing a lot of door-to-door -door canvassing and I, that is something I kind of start with. 
-hmm. And sometimes when I hand them my card and, I, and the date's on there and they're kind of going, what? What is this for? And then they go, what political mm -hmm. party are you with? I says, no, I'm not with the political right. party, right? right? This is this is our community. This is what's important to us. And we have a city that you you live in. Right. And you have a, the little, the you little, can have a say. You can have a say. So yeah. I, I, I try to, first of all, enforce that. Like right. I, I'd say that's really, really important. Right. We get a lot of people voting uh, federally and then a lot ah. of people voting so do you provincially think... and then not very many people voting oh, okay. in, the little, in the civic elections. So why? It kind of should be the other way around. It but should be. It should be the other way around. Well, it should be higher voting across the board. But, it should be. Um, yeah, so that's a huge challenge. Maybe it, teaching it in schools would be, I, I mean, I don't know, maybe they, just the importance of voting maybe should be taught more in schools. Not politics or not political, politics, but just, no. as you say, democracy and how to be engaged mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. um, your obligation or mm -hmm. responsibility maybe even to mm -hmm. vote, right? Yeah, it was instilled in me as a kid. It was, mm -hmm. it was, you know. I know, I brought my daughter when she was a baby. She yeah. was, she came yeah. with us to vote and, you know, she's 27 now and she would not miss an opportunity yeah. to vote. Yeah. So it has to start. It has to start when they're young and yeah. it has to be, it has to be something that, that, that is just, just, right in there instilled yeah. in them and so that's something that I push like mm -hmm. it's the little things it's the little everyday things you know it's the the little itches that get to you yes. in, in a municipality that you want help with well that's why you vote because those are the people can, that can do those can little things changes. right and they can yeah. make them probably faster than at a provincial level or a, a exactly. federal level federal level there's one thing I just want to wrap up with. Mm -hmm. I'm getting signals that our time is okay. almost up here. <laughs> okay, okay, go. Um, so I just want to talk to you a little bit about respectful workplace. Mm. Uh, you are potentially going to be in a situation where you'll be dealing with your colleagues that um, may have different perspectives. May There may be some issues that are even contentious, mm -hmm. right? That people have very strong opinions, mm -hmm. um, not saying that anybody's right or wrong mm -hmm. or good mm -hmm. or bad, but you're just possibly coming at things from different mm -hmm. directions. How would you deal with a situation of potential conflict or something that, you know, um, you have disagreement? What role would you play or how would you support a collaborative, positive work environment? Well, when Opinions are strong. Mm -hmm. You never know why that other person's opinion is strong. Right. You don't know where they've come from. You don't know what's brought them to that table at that moment. Okay. It could just be a bad day, right? Fair enough. Right? Yeah. So I think that listening before you speak okay. is, is really key. Right. You have to listen, like, and really listen, not just listen, okay, now it's my turn and I've got to speak. Like, listen, yeah. listen to where they're coming from. And I find when you do that, there's always common threads. There's okay. always something that you can pull and, and meet, meet. You might not agree, no, for sure. You're not right. gonna always agree on everything, but that's why we're individuals and that's why we, so, are, who we are. So I think that you have to have a calm presence. I think you have to listen. So you're saying be calm, mm -hmm. listen, look for those common threads yeah. and, and try move to work forward. and move forward and try to okay. work. And sometimes you just have to say, okay, you know what? We have to agree to disagree. Right. Now, there has been a lot of talk lately about having some oversight from the provincial level to have like um, a, an integrity commissioner who can come in when there are situations, hopefully not very often, mm -hmm. um, but when there are situations that can't be resolved around the council table, mm -hmm. to have an independent, unbiased third party come in and help sort through that. Is that something that you would support? If, if there's a need for it, I think I would, because mm -hmm. I think that's why sometimes people go to counseling, isn't it? They go to right. counseling because they have this person that's looking at things completely unemotional, and they right. say, okay, let's talk about have this. Have sort so, of a sounding, yeah. Uh, yeah. unbiased, yeah. yeah, okay. And those people are trained. They're right. trained to, to handle conflict. Right. So. For sure. Well, Cindy, I would like to say a huge thank you for coming in. I feel like we had an opportunity to learn about you and about sort of the vision that you have for Port Coquitlam. So we're going to wish you all the very best Thanks. in your Thanks. campaign. Yeah. yeah, I look forward to it. Awesome. Okay. Thanks so much for joining us this afternoon. This is We've Got Issues. And again, we've been speaking with Cindy Kartner, who is running for Port Coquitlam City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.